Hi, my name is Brenda Montana and I'm an Inuk artist and TikTok influencer from Rankin and Let Nunavut. At both Eliana and Hitmakers, we strongly believe that it's possible to make a stable income as an artist and have a career doing what you love. The ways that an artist can make money has changed in the past 20 years and it's become important to have several different ways or revenue streams to earn money. No matter which one you choose, you must remember that your fans are the most important thing because at the end of the day, they are the ones that pay you either directly or indirectly with their attention. Both are extremely valuable. With money, you could pay rent and attention can easily be turned into money. In our world of social media and Spotify, music is basically free. In fact, there's way too much music to listen to, so everybody's fighting for attention. That's why focusing on building strong experiences and personal connections with your fans is so important. But today, since music is basically free, artists can expect to make a stable income with album sales alone. But don't worry, there are still many ways to make money. Although funny enough, most of them are by selling everything except the actual music itself. Here's a list we put together. Live performances. One of the main ways to make money from your music is by touring and performing live shows. Fans can get your music for free. But what they can get for free is a chance to see an in-person, one-of-a-kind performance of your music. For this reason, touring, concerts, and festival performances have become one of the main revenue sources for artists, and the experiences created at a live concert can just be as meaningful for the fans as the music itself. Another revenue stream is motivational speaking, workshops, teaching, and training. This revenue stream can include teaching musical skills, including ukulele lessons, guitar lessons, throat singing lessons, or other vocal techniques, or even cultural teachings like teaching Inuktitut or promoting and educating Kalunat about Inuit history and culture. Work for hire. If you're skilled at your craft, you can get people to hire you as a music producer, session musician, or some other kind of work for hire. To do this, you either have to know people to pay for your services, or you can put up examples of your work on websites like www.soundbetter.com or fiverr.com and allow people to pay you to create specific works for them. Beat making. If you know how to make beats, you can also sell these to other artists or producers, either directly or on websites like BeatStars and Beat Brokers. Music sales. Although it's not as big as it used to be, music sales do still happen, especially when fans love you and want to support your work. You can sell your music directly on websites like bandcamp.com and bandzoogle.com. We'll go over this in more detail in episode 4. In order to increase your royalties, the best thing you could do is write a lot of songs, not only for yourself, but also for other artists and music publishers. Try to perform as many songs as possible too, by doing features and collaborations with other artists. Music licensing. Music licensing is where you allow someone to use your music in their project for a fee. We'll talk more about that in the next video. There are some companies like Nagamo Publishing and MusicSupervisor.com that let you upload your music to an online library to help you do this. If your work is especially popular or very well suited for TV and film, you might also be able to get a publishing deal with an established music publisher, although these types of deals are very rare nowadays. Ad revenue. If you post videos on YouTube, you can earn royalties by placing ads in your video. This way, the more people watch your videos, the more money you make. If you have a website or blog, you could also make space for AdWords and make money each time someone sees the ad. Affiliate marketing. This is when you recommend a product to your fans and every time one of them buys it through your link, you get a small cut of the profits. You can create an affiliate marketing page on websites like amazonaffiliates.com or shopify.ca slash affiliates and promote it on your website, blog, or through social media. Product placement. If you create visual content like photos, videos, live streams, a sponsor might want to pay you to place a product somewhere that many people will be able to see it and want to buy it. 
crowdfunding. If you got a specific project that you'd like to do, like record an album or pay rent in September, you can also try crowdfunding. This is where you set up a donation page on websites like kickstarter.com or gofundme.com and ask people to help pay for your project. Sponsorship and partnerships. Some artists are able to get sponsors that pay them to promote their products, like when McDonald's partnered up with K-pop group BTS to create a unique meal, or when Tim Hortons partnered up with Justin Bieber to create Tim Biebs. Artist and residencies. Artist in residence programs are opportunities for artists to get away from their regular workplace and live in a creative environment or culture while they produce new content. Project funding. A common way to fundraise in Nunavut and Canada is to access grants or contribution funding from various organizations that support cultural projects and economic development. At Hitmakers, we call them patrons. Funding from patrons is normally used to help pay for some of the expenses needed for projects like albums, music videos, and websites. The idea is that the patron helps you create the project and you then sell this project and make enough money to continue your career as an artist. In most cases, this money can also be used to pay for the creation of the project itself, but it can sometimes also be used to cover living expenses for the artists for a specific amount of time. Each region has its own programs that support music. In Nunavut, some examples include various departments within the government of Nunavut and Nunavut Dungavik. Nationally, examples include SOCAN, FACTOR, and Canada Council for the Arts. Each project is different and every patron has their own ways to spend money. In order to access this money, it can be useful to work with a grant writer or a record label. Many of the programs focus on the cultural and economic impact and many have grants specifically designed for indigenous artists. The key to accessing this revenue stream is to create win-win situations so both of the artists and patrons are happy. And that's it. Those are the main ways to create income. There are many more examples we could talk about and new opportunities are created every day. The only real limit to how artists can make money is their imagination. Always remember to treat your music like a business. It's fun, but also your main source of income. You have to be professional and make that money. <laughs> we believe that you're capable of having an amazing music career and we hope you found this episode helpful. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or if you would like additional resources, please go to www.hitmakers.com slash